Welcome, everybody, to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette, and we're so glad you're with us to stay curious. For more than 21 years, our humble museum in downtown Titusville, Florida, has been preserving the birth of the American Space Age right here in Brevard County that we love to call the delivery room of America's wonderful space program. I'm sitting with the gentleman that helped us go to the moon 50-some years ago, Marty Winkle, is my friend and co-producer, cameraman, and running our Streamlabs uh, production facility here. Thank you, Marty. How are you doing today? Doing good. He's doing good. Look at this beautiful earth behind us. I love this backdrop because it represents the astronauts that we're going to talk about today for Black History Month who orbited the earth and did some groundbreaking things. And uh, we're even going to look at one young lady that might be the first lady on the moon. And we will be doing audio podcasts on Apple and Google. So, uh Look forward to all that. And if you've missed a show, like if you didn't see yesterday's show with 89-year-old voice of NASA, Hugh Harris, you got to go back and see that one. We're going to have Hugh on towards the beginning of every month talking about the shuttles of the month. And, and Hugh was very informative and had a, another great story about using duct tape, didn't he, Marty, in space, where they used duct tape to fix a Bruce McCandless's boot that didn't fit right give you a video podcast Monday through Friday that we believe emphasizes our shuttle era and our wonderful astronauts walking around our communities. Marty, kick it off here today. Uh, I've got uh, some news off the top of my head. Did you see where the Starlink satellites are falling out of orbit already that were launched last week? We watched them go up the other day. Well, because of the solar activity that's increasing, uh, a news story today said up to 40 Starlink satellites may have already been their launch. They go up to 80 to 100 miles and then boost it up by a propulsion system. But uh, definitely the increase of solar activity is an astronomer's uh, thing that we've talked about. And we'll talk about on Stargazer uh, Mark with Backyard Astronomy one Monday. In an 11-year cycle, there's a peak and a valley, and we're going back up to where the sun is getting more active with sunspots and slightly hotter. And that increases the, the heat around our whole solar system, which makes the Earth's atmosphere a little hotter. And when things get hot, they rise. So the atmosphere has risen appreciably up uh, higher than predicted in a solar flare, a uh, solar storm that hit the Earth. Uh, right when these were being launched. When we see a solar flare go off the sun, it's communications devices because we're going to see some solar storms wipe out some some uh, maybe city grids. They, they've done It's happened before. So I found that interesting also to weave with Skylab 4 coming back to Earth 48 years ago yesterday, setting the, the record that stood for four years of 84 days in space. Uh, those three astronauts, uh, only Ed Gibson is alive, Jerry Carr and Bill Pogue, the other two that passed away. But their main mission, as were the other two Skylab crews, were the solar telescope was the biggest scientific thing ever orbited to look at the sun at the time. And it was a ground base for a lot of the knowledge about this solar activity we're talking about. So a couple things off the top of my head I saw in the news today, but as we celebrate our shuttles, Marty hit the picks for me here. There we go. Uh, we, we're celebrating our shuttles of February, and uh, we had, of course, 41B we talked extensively about in that man maneuvering unit breakthrough uh, untethered spacewalks by Bruce McCandless and Robert Stewart. Uh, that was 38 years ago. We had three uh, shuttles launched on the third, STS-60 and 63 were the other two. On February 7th, we had STS-98 there that took up the Destiny Lab to the uh, space station. We're going to talk about them in a minute. But launched on February 7th and February 8th were the two missions uh, I'm going to show you here. STS-122, that was a hard hat construction mission to the space station and put on my spectacles here. It was Atlantis, and uh, that was a February 7th, 2.45 p.m. launch, uh, and it was a 13-day mission, pretty long mission. Took up the Columbus Laboratory to the International Space Station, and we're going to highlight the African-American astronaut on that mission to do the first spacewalk uh, 
uh, uh, Leland Melvin's on that one. Okay, and Leland didn't he he did a spacewalk, but he wasn't the first African American to do that. And then STS-30 launched in space history in 2010. That'd been 12 years ago. Uh, uh, on uh, today's date, uh, February 9th, uh, at 4, 14 a.m., all right? Actually, I think it goes down as a February 8th launch because that had been about uh, 11, 14 at night, uh, Eastern Standard Time. Anyway, it uh, took up the tranquility, took, took up the cupola that they call tranquility. That's why the patch looks like the cupola windows there. And that was the last piece of hardware taken up. And we had George Zamka was the commander, Kay Heyer was a mission specialist, Terry Virts was the pilot on that. And uh, I, was, I wanted to sh consult my subtle scroll here a second to see if Terry Virts, yes, that was his uh, second flight. So a pilot and then a commander, uh, and he was a Marine uh, to boot, Marty, so. Bob Behnken was also on this mission, and he flew the first demo uh, up to the space station with Doug Hurley, uh, the Space Crew Dragon. So we'll talk a little more about those missions on Thursday and Friday when we have Triple T in here on Friday. But we wanted to talk today about uh, uh, and thank uh, Hugh Harris. There's Hugh. Thank you, Hugh. To a picture of I took, uh, took of him yesterday, the voice of NASA. Uh, 35 year career he says he goes out to launches occasionally and we're looking forward to having you on every month Hugh uh, very an enlightening uh, his interest he's seen it all in the shuttle era and we also want to thank these two guys here that is Tom Usiak on the left and his brother his, his baby brother Mark on the right there hi guys wanted to show that we talk about them a lot because they're great contributors to our show now, giving us photographs of their more than 70 shuttle launches and walkouts of the crews. And uh, Mark helped Marty and me photograph the Grumman reunion of Apollo 13 a couple weeks ago. Uh, but we wanted to put a face on the Tom and Mark Usiak there from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And... Uh, Guys, we're having a little cold spell here, but by the time uh, uh, Mark's coming down to watch the rollout of the Artemis uh, rocket, hopefully here in a week or so, and Tom will be doing a program with us. I think we booked it for April 4th when he's down here on a family vacation. He's going to tell you all about how the photographs were distributed that the astronauts took, how they were processed, how NASA picked them and distributed them, because he had a wonderful professional photo lab in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, that he retired from. And Tom uh, is going to have a great program. You'll want to watch that. Thank you guys for really uh, enhancing uh, our museum and the Stay Curious program. And tomorrow, holy cow, you're not going to want to miss Sharon McDougall. Sharon McDougall is an astronaut space uh, suit tech uh, and a long career at NASA in, in Houston. We're going to talk to uh, Sharon via Zoom to, or Google Meets tomorrow and we'll have Trekkie Techie Jessica in here helping us go through that she's got a wonderful post-career story of where she is reaching out to students through STEAM she's wrote a cute little book with an artist called Suit Up for Launch with Shay and uh, a real real outgoing personality I've seen a lot of good pictures of Sharon uh, cutting it up with the crews and so forth. So uh, she will be a popular guest on Stay Curious tomorrow. So you don't want to miss that. And then we'll have Triple T on Friday. Well, uh, we want to wish a happy birthday. Here's our birthday girl, Marty. Here, I'll go to Equal. Oh, you, you beat me to it there. Yeah, we got the birthday banner. There we go. <laughs> I'll let you hit it. Happy birthday to... Peggy Annette Whit, uh, Whitson here. And Peggy Whitson is quite a national treasure as an astronaut. And I'm looking for uh, a couple little notes I had on her here. Uh, she uh, is, is the, has the most time in space of any astronaut. 666 days, born February of American astronaut, I meant to say, Marty. February 9th, 1960, she was born in Beaconsfield, Iowa. All right. And she and her sister Kathy and her brothers uh, Brian and Hugh grew up on a hog farm in Beaconsfield, Iowa. 
and she uh, was a research scientist in biochemistry is her field. And then she got into the astronaut corps, and her resume is incredible. Uh, uh, not only having uh, five uh, space flights, uh, two long duration missions, uh, her record of 289 days in orbit for a woman stood until uh, Christina Cook uh, took that over. Uh, she holds the record for the oldest woman spacewalker and the record for total spacewalks by a woman, which is 10. So she's 62 years old, Marty, and she's going to space again as commander of the Axiom Company's uh, mission to the International Space Station in a... Um, uh, SpaceX Crew Dragon that they're scheduled. She's training right now for it, scheduled to launch uh, the end of this year or the beginning of 2023. Uh, uh, like I said, 10 EVAs in space, totaling 60 hours. All right. She was listed in Time Magazine's most 100, top 100 most influential women and tripper stories but one of the ones he's told here is that when he put her in the shuttle for one of her missions he gave her a little goose on his butt as she walked into the spaceship so uh she's she's quite a, a wonderful lady and uh i would love to meet her but it's probably going to take a while till she absolutely retires because she's going back to space for another mission a private mission as commander of exium mission two and I don't really know what all that's about, except she'll be up at the space station where she was the commander uh, on, on two expeditions, Expedition 11 and, I mean, Expedition 16 and um, uh, 52 she was a commander of, or 50, 51, somewhere in there. And uh, Pam Melroy, pardon me? It's on her shirt to go back as far. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 51. Yeah, she's on there on 51, so she may have been a commander of that. Uh, when Pam Milroy commanded a space shuttle and docked with it, it is the first time two females were commanding spaceships in orbit. So uh, happy 62nd birthday to Peggy Whitson. Hope many of you have met her. And if you have, share a story about her on our thread here today. Well, this is Black History Month, and we want to celebrate our African-American pioneers in space. And the first one we're going to talk about today is Bernard Harris. I've got three for us today that are very appropriate. Bernard Harris was in space right now on STS-63, and he, uh, uh, at 63's uh, consult the scroll here, was, um, they're so out of sequence. Would you believe that 63 is after 68, 66, 65? Anyway, that was Discovery, the 20th flight of Discovery in um uh, Bernard Harris became the first African American to do a spacewalk on that mission in 1995. And there he is getting ready to do a spacewalk with uh, uh, Jerry Voss, I believe, in uh, School of Medicine. And he completed his residency at the Mayo Clinic. He's an internal medicine expert. He founded the Harris Foundation. Uh, he found the Harris Foundation. Uh, oh. Okay, Marty's moving the mic a little way there. I'm trying to talk soft. He found the Harris Foundation, a Texas-based nonprofit organization whose mission is, a statement is to invest in community-based initiatives to support education, wealth, health, and welfare, and uh, to help the socially disadvantaged and recognize their potential to pursue their dreams. And uh, Bernard Harris helps inner city kids with summer camps god bless him and his he loves saying prepare our kids now for jobs that don't exist today so we salute bernard harris there a spacewalker he's actually 65 years old and he was walking in space in 1993 uh, uh yesterday was one of his spacewalks this is one of the uh logos that i love this is uh um uh, STS 98's logo. Uh, to me, it looks like a Grateful Dead uh, steal your face skull uh, loosely uh, put together there. But the mission was to put up Destiny, the uh, important module for America on the space station. 
And let me get my cheat sheet on 98 there to tell you it was Atlantis in 2001. All right. Uh, so that's uh, 21 years ago uh, this mission was going on. And uh, the astronauts always have fun doing, uh, uh, always have fun doing a, um, a serious photo, crew photo, and then they do kind of a parody or, or, or funny one, uh, what is apropos to their mission, or they just come up with something. And uh, a lot of these posters are, are, are comical, but they also have the theme of do your job or we could die. Is, is sort of the theme. So here's one of the best ones, and we have it in the wall of our workers' gallery. Think safety, you got a problem with that? Where they're all dressed up like uh, back alley thugs there, uh, and that is left to right is Marsha Ivins. And, and let me see, Marsha on this mission of 98, as I sh consult the shuttle scroll here, uh, 98... Oh, they get so horribly out of out of whack, and that's so hard for me to remember. Can't even find 98, 96, 95. It was in, um, there it is. Uh, Mike Leinbach launched that in February. Uh, that is Cockrell's fourth flight. He's the commander, and Polanski has his first uh, there. So, yeah, that's Marsha Ivins on the left, her fifth flight. Okay, her, her fifth and last flight for Marsha. And then next to her is um, uh, our, our man of the hour, Robert Kerbeam, uh, who uh, you're going to learn about his uh, uh, record-setting spacewalks. And that is the Commander Cockrell in the middle and Polanski's on the floor installing the U.S. Laboratory Destiny on the space station. But Kerbeam and, and, and Tom Jones did a series of spacewalks. And... There's Kerbeam there, uh, Robert Kerbeam, uh, Little Day County, Maryland. Uh, he currently holds the record for the most spacewalks during a single space flight. He did three. No, during during the STS mission, Kerbeam completed four spacewalks in performing the unexpected fourth EVA to aid in the retraction of a solar panel array. Kerbeam became the first person to perform four spacewalks on a single mission. So uh, he presently works for Northrop Grumman Innovation Systems uh, in Virginia. And uh, he, let, he was in NASA for 13 years. Uh, there's the crew here, kind of a nice casual picture there. That's Tom Jones, Kerbeam, Polanski, Ivans, and uh, the commander there, uh, Ken Cockrell. Uh, they, I'll bet that's the beach house, Marty. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the beach house where they all go out and, and have a night celebration and relax before they get... Uh, serious with their mission when they come over here to the coast. So, kind of sort of relax. Kind of sort of relax. Yeah. You mean they're too nervous or they're, yeah. Well, they, they have a few adult beverages I know out there and to relax them a little bit. But, uh, and there is Robert. God, what a great American. What a great uh, example for Afri the African American community and people everywhere. Uh, and we hope to, to meet him someday. And there he is getting ready for an EVA. And our final African American on Black History Month to celebrate is uh, uh, this this young lady here, Stephanie Wilson. And Stephanie Wilson's notes are over here. Uh, she right now is um, 56 years old. And Stephanie, there there's where she was chosen right there, all young before she flew, did everything. Look at that hairstyle there, girls. Um, there she is a few years ago before one of her missions. Uh, she was the second African-American woman to go to space after Mae Jameson. Her 42 days in space are the most of any female African-American astronaut. She was born in Boston, Massachusetts, and uh, her father was an electrical engineer at Ray Ray Raytheon and encouraged her to go into engineering. And boy, did she, Marty. She attended Harvard. <laughs> okay. He got a Bachelor of Science degree from Harvard. Well, I'm going to toast that with a little rocket fuel there, Stephanie. Mmm. Ah, tastes good. Um, she's even a member of the Harvard Board of Overseers and was Chief Marshal of the Harvard Commencement. 
So uh, a, a real brainiac. Three missions, STS-121, uh, Discovery, and then uh, she was in 120, uh, which uh, uh, delivered Harmony to the International Space Station. And then she flew, the, she operated the robotics arm on STS-131. And she's been a ground controller uh, and was the controller talking to the, the first all-female spacewalk. Christina Cook and Jessica Meir did that, and she was the Capcom for it. Uh, and uh, she's a married lady. Her husband's name's June, and the first person of color to walk on the moon. Wouldn't that be cool? I'd be rooting for her. I'm rooting for her, and, and Jessica Meir is, is in my pool to who's going to be the first woman on the moon with a close Christina Cook right behind him there. So we salute our African-American astronauts, uh, and, and we've, we've talked to many in the African-American community that worked at NASA, and you know, they all say almost single-handedly, you know, it's it's one workplace, one work environment, that there's no no color, no no creed, no no religious convictions, nothing like that interferes with what these people do for a living, go into the incredibly harsh environment of outer space and do amazing things that have benefited America. So and this lady's on the top of the list of that for you females out there, whatever color you are. So our shuttles of February, Marty. We'll come back and talk about a few more tomorrow, Thursday on Stay Curious, and Friday have Triple T. Marty's got some uh, uh, little uh, some people watching us today. We got George and Bonnie Smitty. Hey, Smitties, thank you. That's your nephew. That's right. And uh, glad that they're watching us here and had a good time. Jesse Hall's been watching. Uh, Dave Stang is up there in Michigan. Uh, hello, Dave. Tom Usiak uh, and Melissa Pope. Tom and Mark uh, Usiak, of course, are watching. Um, and uh, the, by the way, the picture I took of them was at the Odvar Hazy Museum when Marty took us up there to see uh, the installation of Triple T's closeout crew uniform there. Thank you, Christopher Mick, for watching us there in Wisconsin. And Joyce BK Abbey. And I wonder if Chris Callie's watching. Hope you are. We miss seeing you here on the Space Coast, Chris, but we're going to get in touch with you. He wants to start uh, partnering with the American Space Museum with his wonderful art and the legacy of his, his father, Paul Callie. So, Marty, thank you all for everybody watching today. Do we have anything else to clean up there? Everybody's good, good. Well, again, night over Europe and, and, and the Americas there in this uh, somewhat digitized picture of uh, the Earth from space. And that's what we love, celebrating our astronauts who have orbited this Earth. And we hope you've enjoyed uh, talking about more pioneering African-American astronauts. And we'll have Triple T on Friday. So thank you all for watching. And I'm Mark Marquette on behalf of our American Space Museum. We'll see you again tomorrow to bridge the space between us.